All right, we're gonna get just to allow a few of you guys to come in. You guys are coming in. All right, so on the eve of October 20th, 2022, an altercation happened between Franklin Parish and the Carroll High football team. There were nine coaches that were suspended because they decided to cross over on the field to see about one of their coaches. And that coach is here with me on tonight. This is a conversation that should have been had on last year, but on tonight we're going to allow Quillen, Druzon Quillen, to explain his side of the story. Now understand, what transpired on that night, I documented, there was so much evidence that was present. And even though he had to go to trial for this, understand, he went to jail for something that he didn't do. He didn't do it. But they found him guilty, and he wound up spending 23 days. And what detention center were you in? Uh, Richland, right there off Highway 15. Richland Parish Detention Center for a crime that he did not commit. And he's getting ready to tell you what happened on last year. I need you guys to get ready for this. You can grab your popcorn. You can pop off your shoes. You can call your friends because we need to get into this on tonight. The story has never been told like this before. Mind you, I was in the courtroom when they found him guilty. And it was nothing that I'd never seen, ever seen in my lifetime. Do you hear me? Nine coaches were suspended. Three were arrested. Do you understand what I'm saying right now? One. Druzon Quillen was arrested. And what did they, what was the charge that they had given you? Uh, inciting a riot, participating in a riot, and a uh, battery on the officer. I think the other one may have been disorderly conduct. Wow. And right now, are you even able to work in not, the state of Louisiana right now? Not in the school system. Not in the school system? Not in the school system. So is there a time, date? Uh, it's, as of right now, until this appeal goes through, it's like, my understanding, it's a permanent thing. It's permanent. Yes. Yes. We're talking about a man that is passionate about what he does. A man that is gifted and talented. A man that is chosen by God. Unjustly. Arrested. Placed in jail. You got to tell us. You got to tell us, Druzon. What was that? What was that all about? It's just been a nightmare, really. I, I wish it never would have happened. Yeah. You know, but, uh, just uh, total uh, just misuse of, of power. Yeah. And uh, just excessive force. Yes. But it uh, looked like an off duty to sheriff. You know, he had plain clothes on. He didn't present himself right. as law enforcement. Right. Uh, you, people start seeing the videos that's about to get out. And you can really see what he, how, what you know, what his attire was. That That's night. right. He was just, to me, I thought he was just a, a intoxicated booster, you know. Uh huh. From right. Until after everything had been happened. Right. Because you know? I documented the whole thing. I mean, I, I think it was 139,000 people that actually viewed it, and we had nearly 800 shares that night. And to see what's happening on today, why don't you just give us just a little background about? You know where you come from. You know what you you, you know what you're doing now, okay. and uh, just uh, fill us in. 
I'm originally uh, from New Orleans, the uptown area. Mm -hmm. uh, graduated high school down there. Uh, yeah. Received a scholarship. Had really never heard of Monroe. My dad did. He was okay. a truck driver. All right. Never heard of Monroe until uh, at the time I think it was in there. You offered me a scholarship. That's right. To come up here and play ball and uh, you know further my education and pursue my you know football thing. Okay. Okay. So leading up into the events, when the sheriff, you know, y'all were coming out of the press box. A lot of things were said, you know. Right. So you're coming down the stairway, you're coming out of the bleachers, and you were. Uh, initially, it started with uh, first quarter. Everything was going pretty good. It was. So, we were winning. Well, it was a tight game. Yeah, it was. A tight game. Yes. Which uh, I was happy about because <laughs> we had such a strong team. Like, That's so right. We were kind of just running over people. So we got got a little challenge, which I was happy about. Right. And um, so when we took the lead, that's when everything just started kicking up. You know, we had a, a, a gentleman approach uh, me and Coach uh, Candler. Okay. And this guy, he, he was a uh, Franklin Parish staff. He walked up on us so close to where I could feel his, his chest kind of brushing up against the back of my shoulder. So in your personal space? In my personal space. Uh -huh. and, that's, and that's when we were... Uh, just to be clear, a lot of people think we were in the press box. Okay. We were on top of the roof of the press box. Wait a minute. So you weren't in the inside of no, the press box? on top of the roof. On top of the roof? Top were you not allowed to go into? Well, we had to go. It, it was so small. I okay. Guess it, it didn't, I guess you would call it accommodators. It didn't accommodate the, the three coaches, or well, the four coaches we had up there. Mm. So we had to kind of go through a, a attic type of a ladder, fold out ladder. Right. And, this um, is new information. Right. So Thank we, you for sharing so that. We definitely wasn't inside the press box. We was mm. on the roof of it, which, was, which had a bad type of feeling to it. Oh, Lord. You know, Must we go back to the 60s? Because, I mean, there was a time now. I have to admit, you know, back then, early, you know, during the civil rights era, right. you know, um, where there was white and black. And I just have to be honest, you know, blacks would always sit in the balcony. Right. And then, you know. Whites were sitting at the bottom right, in the movies. Right. So, yeah, I just had a little flashback there. But go I mean, ahead. It, 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 That's how it felt. You're right, sister. It had that type of uh, vibe to it. Exactly. Um, and it's a Christian school because I remember right. they announced it while we were there. We right, are a right. Christian school. Right, okay. Right. Come on with it. And uh, what, what, yeah, people could look at it like it's a coincidence. Mm -hmm. Uh, them and Sterlington is the only two schools that had us on the roof. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Sterlington as well. The only two schools. Had you on the roof. And it just happened to be a coincidence. Y'all could take it for whatever it's worth. But, so, this is uh, we were new on the information. Y'all yeah. received this. Now, understand what he's saying. They were not, and he's not saying they were not allowed into the press box. But for some reason, there was not, we, they couldn't accommodate them. It wasn't enough space or enough room, so they had to go on top of the roof. Right. Makes a lot of sense, does it? It does not. Go ahead. Right. So, uh, second quarter, like I said, the, the gentleman came in our personal space. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't a, a, a big roof, but it was enough. We only had about 10 people out there. It was enough for everybody to respect each other's space. You okay. Know? And uh, the guy just approached us, and I, I looked at one of my other coaches who, were on, who was on the side of me, and I said, man, you know, what's going on? And he looked at me like, so I turned around and I asked the man, I said, uh, man, you can't back up out of our personal space, man, you're pretty close to us. And uh, his, his response was, I don't have to move anywhere. That's my equipment right there, and I work for the school. So he, and when he said that, he pointed to his laptop. So I don't know if he thought, I, I guess he just used that to justify getting our space and mm. get a little, you know, get a little tight with us. So he was kind of throwing his weight around. That's what that's Being exactly very disrespectful. He, yeah. he didn't, he didn't announce who he was. He just wanted to just get, just came up behind you. Yeah. yeah oh, okay. Was, yeah. So he came up in our personal space and, uh, so that was, that was the first kind of thing that, other than that, it was just the fans kind of somewhat with a little back and forth. Normal fan stuff in the first quarter. Okay, so Normal the fans. Oh, okay. The fans was, was was being, for the most part, cool in the first quarter. Okay. Everything was just a little back and forth, which doesn't have any high school. Yeah, yeah. But uh, once it turns 
disrespectful uh, 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 physical for the, the, the gentleman uh, coming into our personal space. Uh -huh. That's what kind. Of, that's when I uh, notified uh, Dr. Davis, our uh, principal at the time. Dr. Get Davis. all this. This is new information that needs to be heard. So you had already spoken with your administrator, which right. was the principal of the right. school at the right. time, right. to let him know what was going on. What was wrong? That's what you, what you were supposed to do. Giving him a heads up. Yeah, like proper doctor, protocol. You know, if, if if things continue on and get out of hand, we're gonna we're gonna leave from over here just to you know. Well, look at that. Just a, a calming situation now. And we also, uh, two of the coaches that were up there in the press box with me, they have a uh, really, which I, I know the lady, she taught my uh, younger brother and my nephew over at Washington, their principal, Miss Bonner. I know her. Two of the coaches uh, spoke to her and reached out to her before halftime and at halftime mm -hmm. to let, let her know that the fans were getting a a little bit rowdy up there. Yeah. So we was just trying to, we wasn't there for the BS. We really was just was trying to uh, do our job and, yeah. and win a football game. That's all we could. That's all. That's all it was. To let the kids enjoy the game. So know? thereafter, do you, did he leave and go and report you guys? I mean. The, the gentleman who came in our yeah. space? No. Because he actually, was on his staff. We actually, uh, we left for halftime. We actually left a little bit earlier to. Okay. To. Uh, diffuse that situation. All right. So we had about uh, maybe three or four minutes left in the halftime, and we went down early to leave out of the, the roof of the press box and go down. So you had already went room. down the stairs before. Well, we, you know, you went for halftime. Uh, yes, we went at halftime. Okay. But but, but uh, he approached us before halftime. Okay. Okay. So we left a little bit early instead of leaving normally, and we leave mm -hmm. at halftime. We right. left about three four minutes before okay. halftime just to try to. Uh, call them the situation now. Right. And that's when uh, we notified, like I said, I contacted uh, Dr. Davis myself personally uh, through the headset, and I may have called him on the cell phone. Mm -hmm. And our other two coaches, they, they notified uh, Miss Bonner, the right. principal of Franklin Parish, uh, of what kind of what was going on, that the fans were kind of getting a little bit out of the way, and one of yeah. our staff members, you know, was invading our personal That's space. right, and they were a bit outrageous, so this is what I want to talk about now. So now we're in the third quarter. Right. We talked about the halftime, the guy was in your, you know, in your personal space, right. you know, he was throwing his weight around, right. uh, he really didn't say who he was, right. but then after you guys moved aside, well, then he wants to tell you, you right. know, hey, this is my stuff. Well, you said that. Well, you know, this is my laptop, yeah, this that's is what my, excuse yeah. excuse for uh, coming in our space talking about his laptop, but. Like I asked him, man, your laptop right there, we're not trying to... Yeah, you're not trying to take it or to try that. to use it or anything. Exactly, it didn't make yeah. any sense to me, you know. And uh, they had some other staff members, well, they actually, they video guy mm -hmm. was on top of the roof. And me and this guy, he had his kid up there, mm -hmm. right? So me and this guy, uh, us and the other coaches, we were interacting the whole time. Yeah. Man, no problem. Right. Actually, it was, a, was a, a, a good dude, you know, we was back and forth, talking, yeah. we wasn't even no trash talk, we was just talking just yeah. just, just regularly, you But know? this one came upstairs with something on his mind. Yeah, uh, happened to be a, a, a white gentleman, and, uh, okay. but the, the video guy was a, a, a black man, and we didn't have any problem with him, right. which, you know, it kind of threw me off a little bit, but then we start the third quarter, and uh, that PA announcer, can't exactly remember his name. I think his, his name is Dugard. Okay. And uh, he came out of the press box, put the mic to his side. Wait a minute. Put what? the mic to his side, and he just ran down his list about how trash Carol was. How to let up on top of the roof to us. Carol, you trash. So. Carol, you trash. Your, your coach is trash, your team is trash, your band is trash, your cheerleaders are trash. This is what the, the PA... The, the PA announcer came announced. out of the press box and put the mic to his side. He so, was, was, was so just arrogant with it. I don't even think he had the mic all the way pressed down to his side. The yeah. way he probably could still hear it. Right. But our band was cutting up, so you probably couldn't hear it, you know, So the because the band was playing so good. So he's trying to agitate you. Yeah, guys. so he just insulted us. And which, uh, me personally, I got I got thick skin. That that didn't. Uh, but just when you go to talking about our kids and saying that, that's I, right. You know, the, the cheerleaders and, and this trash is Christian and the band is, Oh, okay. Keep on. Same guy who who made the statement saying that uh, 
But y'all can look it up. He's he's quoted in the, in the article uh, afterward by Ken and we saying that uh, just trying to put everything on us. But he didn't say the part where he called us all kind of trash. That's you know? right. He didn't say that. So uh, and that's why it's always three sides to the story. Right. Go right. ahead. So uh, immediately after that, we kind of just brushed him off so much. So he ran. He went back off into the press box. Our team continued to play good ball uh, with the adjustments we made at halftime. Right. We, just, we just had an awesome team. Still do, we had a, a real strong team last year. So the lead started to build. And it felt like every time we scored some more points and opened the lead up, it was just more and more. And there was a, a parent out there, uh, this older white lady, and she just wouldn't, she was basically kind of jumping the gun for us saying we were cussing, you know, and I was like, ma'am, and, you know, I said, ma'am, I said, you know, looked at my coaches, I said, ma'am. And this is a spectator? I was a fan. Okay. I was a fan. Mm -hmm. And I said, ma'am, we've been, we've been real mild tonight, you know, real low key tonight. I said, ma'am, y'all, ain't nobody been cussing or nothing like that. And I said, ma'am, you know, I said, ASS? I said, maybe if you heard it, you know, one of us say, tell one of the kids to, I tell one of the coaches, you know, tell such and such to get his butt in the game or get his yeah, yeah. in the game. You know, normal coach talk, nothing derogatory. They would try to they, they would try to make it like we were up there just cussing like sailors or cussing at their fans. Oh. Even when I played ball, sister, even when I played ball, I didn't have things thrown at me on the road. I didn't have fans call you everything in the book. Right. And I never let that get under my skin. I always if anything, I'll point at the scoreboard, you know, and I'll take it out on the field. That's right. And and that's the way I would want our kids to react too. Exactly. You know, by leading by example. So uh after after that happened, like I said, the lady she just wouldn't be she just kept going on and on and on. I guess uh the new word for it, they call him a carer. She was definitely being a carer. Oh yeah. So she just kept going on and on. So after I told her, uh I said, Man, Willie, really? I said, you know, we may have slipped and said ass, you know, ASS. I say ASS, really, man? And uh, after that, I just told all the other coaches, man, that just ignore her. Yeah. And let's just keep on doing what we can. And she's talking from the... She was talking from the bleachers, uh, hollering up at the, us on her. Was she now? So uh, after that, it came to about the end of the third quarter. Mm. I think we up about 20-something uh, points tonight. Right. Uh, game in hand. So uh, I see a gentleman running up the stairs and kind of stumbling up the stairs a little bit. I'm thinking it may be her husband. She may be a booster or something like that. He may be a booster, you know. So but I have to ask this question. Did she report? Do you feel like she reported it to someone at that time for the gentleman to come stumbling up? The bleachers? She she may have, but the, the thing is, just to be clear with it, and, and this is, her, you know, a thousand percent facts. Okay. No one never approached us. Like, we, we was never approached as far as uh, leaving the press box. We were never asked to leave. We were never told, you know. We was never because you were anything. never in the press box. Or even the roof. We were never asked to leave the roof and, and come down or anything like that. That. So that, this is why we did this conversation yeah. on tonight. Right. So that story of uh, we was asked to leave the press box, that's an absolute lie, y'all. That's an absolute lie. Like, absolute like, lie. It's just a thousand percent of lies. So we see the uh, gentleman running up the stairs. So I'm thinking he's just a booster. He's stumbling up the stairs. Stumbling. Bad, barely made it up the stairs. Barely made it. So uh, I had already... Like I said, contacted uh, Dr. Davis and let him know. That's right. Stop, man. If, As you were supposed if to. If things escalate, uh, go to getting out of mm. hand, we don't leave early. And Come on with you. Just to be honest with you, I want to hear the band. I like seeing, I, like, I really like being on the sideline. That's right. But that was my role with the coaching staff to help mm -hmm. the team. I do whatever, uh, you know, I'm a bottom line type of person. If it helps what we got going on, you know, I'm a team player. So mm -hmm. coach asked me to be up in the press box. But I was really really, you know, anxious to get to the sideline That's for right. the fourth quarter. That's right. So, like I said, I had uh, told Dr. Davis, you know, if, if things continue on escalating, we're going to go on and leave. Dr. You got Davis. to get out of there. You know, 
just to, and, and he agreed with me. Let uh, my head coach know, let uh, Coach Landers know. Yeah. I said, my man, you know, they got some BS going on up there. You know, they, they just cutting up up here. We probably going to leave early. Him and Doc gave us the okay. The game was in hand. Mm -hmm. you know, so they, they were inciting a riot. Basically kind of uh -huh. riling things up. So yeah, they were. As we go to leave, by, like I said, my decision, which I stated in my testimony during my trial, uh, multiple times, probably about five times, I made mm -hmm. that clear sure that did. it was my decision to leave. You sure did. You know, we were never asked to leave. We were ne we was never forced to leave. You said it right there in that camera. We was never asked to leave and we was never forced to leave. And I was in court with him, y'all. Never. Never. So as we go to leave, like you said, we're leaving mm. from the mm -hmm. upper deck roof. We're coming down this little uh, attic type of ladder. Okay. There's a gentleman who was stumbling up the stairs. Okay. He's at the bottom inside of the press box he's at the door to exit the press box y'all visualize what he's saying come on he's at the door so he's already before we even get our two feet down on the on the floor of the press yeah. box he's cussing us out i'm talking about hold up the gentleman that was stumbling was cussing y'all out yes i didn't hear that yes in the courtroom yes, yes. but the gentleman so come on now we got to talk about who is that gentleman I, that was stumbling up and cussing y'all out. Right. Who was that? Right. It, it it turned out to be, later on we found out that it was a sheriff. Wait a minute. Wait. <laughs> Pump your brakes. We're going to rewind. We got to, we, we, we got to go back. We're going to pedal back. The gentleman that was coming up the bleachers, that was stumbling, that was cursing, cussing. Turned out to be the sheriff. Turned out to be the sheriff. The sheriff. I thought he just was a, a drunk booster, he just being, yeah. just being blunt with you, being frank, just being straight up. Yeah. I thought he just was a drunk booster. It's a small little, small school. Yeah. Kind of let the boosters kind of somewhat, mm -hmm. you know, the boosters kind of run the school That's sometimes. Right. You know? That's right. So he coming up the stairs? No, no, he didn't. He never came up the stairs. He, he, when he came up the bleachers, he never came up the stairs that we take, that we took to uh -huh. get to the top roof of the he of never the took off he never no we was already on our way down but in his testimony when i was there because i was there that's the lie he told when me. he got on the stand that's the lie and he, he was me. saying that he approached you guys and he asked y'all he announced that he was the sheriff that's an absolute lie that's i mean we were both in the same courtroom that's right absolute lie. okay he, he did, which he used that to try to justify Everything else. His action. Right, like he called us down, like he identified who yeah. he was. No, that was, that's that's a, and my witnesses, the coaches who were with me. And that's what you call abusing your authority. They can testify yes. to that too. So right. like I said, he's he's cussing us out. Uh get the F down here. Stop it. Yeah, I'm talking about, I don't the want, sheriff? Uh, yeah, I don't wanna cuss, but he's mm -hmm. you know, get the F down here. Did he? Uh, you're going to do what the F I tell you to do. You're going to do what the F I tell you to do when I tell you to do it. Wait a minute. Yes, sir. Yes. That's what the chef said to yes. you? Yes. And my response was... Baby, we I not. Say, <laughs> I say, hold up. Wait I say, hold up. I say, I try to... I ain't going to say laugh at all, but I try to uh, lighten it up a little bit. Yeah, because you're in shock. I mean, you cussing me out. I was trying to out. lighten it up so he exactly. tried to get my temper, you know, raising up because it doesn't... Somebody just cussing me out like that. I, I, I'm big on respect and I'm very big on, I'm very small on disrespect. That's it. So uh, he, he he's cussing out. I say, man, hold up. I say, you coming up here to probably confront us about your fans saying we were up here cussing. You using language worse than what they try to accuse us of. I say, it don't make no sense to me. Make that make sense. You coming yeah. up here to approach us. That's right. But you cussing us out. Like, mm. we, like we less than, like we some animals, you know, some way the way you talk to a dog or somebody, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't so talk, remember this the home of the Ku Klux Klan. I, I wouldn't talk to, the, uh, 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 you know, the man in front of the store asking for change like that. Everybody deserves respect. Yeah. So uh, he's talking to me, you know, talking to all three of the coaches just crazy. So I said, look, man, I told him just like this. I said, man, if the shoe was on the other foot, and y'all was whooping us on the field. We'll take our lick, man. Go back to the drawing board and get better. That's it. I say, 
this kids playing, man. I didn't know grown ups get like this over some kids playing. You know, like y'all can't take a loss. Y'all shouldn't have put us on the schedule for senior night. So I, I'm telling them that. So then uh, he hauls off, asking the. I said, man, please back away from the door, man, and let us leave, man. It don't make no sense. You asked him. Asked him, please back away from the door. I say, because you coming up here to maybe to ask us to leave or maybe try to put us out or whatever. I said, it don't make no sense. We're trying to leave. So he was more on putting us out him himself than us leaving. So he was the aggressor. He, oh, definitely oh. was. So in this way, it really uh, took a turn. You know, like I said, the, the verbal, that was bad enough, but... Uh, when he when he didn't move away from the door, the next thing he tries to do is haul off and choke one of our coaches. Wait a minute. And that's, now, that's, surely that's, he went to the police academy. He hauls off and tries to attempt to choke one of our coaches. So he wants to just instantly lay hands. So he never asked y'all, you know, when, in his testimony, he said he had asked you guys to leave? No, no, oh, no. If, I mean, happened? if, 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 uh, you gonna go the F where I tell you to go, when the F I tell you to go, if that's asking, if that's asking. No, that's telling. That's me. asking. So uh, he hauls off and try to choke one of our coaches. The coach, Coach Happy, knocks his hands off him. Kind of like knocks his hands off As he should because he's trying to defend right, himself. But he, he, that's he, right. He, he didn't grab him anything. He just kind of put his arm out to put keep a little distance that's between right. them. So when he... Put his arm out and knocked his hands off, and that gave us a chance to kind of wiggle on out the door. That's right. A wiggle room. So is that when he said that instead of you guys following him, because he said he asked y'all to follow him. I remember I was in court to follow him. You guys ended up one was going left, one was going right, and I'm just trying to remember. He was saying that everybody just kind of dispersed. Everybody went their own direction. Sister, that don't make it. The way <laughs> we were leaving, when you leave out of the door, you would exit to the right. Now, what door is this? It's the door to the press box. Okay. Yeah, when, when you leave out of that Because y'all got to come off the roof. Yeah, when you leave out of there that bottom go. door on the bottom floor ah, of the press box. When you leave out of that door. It. Yeah, so it gave oh, us a chance room. to wiggle out the door. You never in the press box. Well, we You got to come through. Yeah, not not inside the where we kind of... Right. Call with a, with just, yeah. You know what I'm saying? We exactly. just, it's a straight shot, basically, from the ladder straight to the exit door. So Shut we the didn't, front you know, door we didn't go in the dead Look at so as we exit, he's following behind. So it's uh, two coaches in front of me. I'm last out. Well, I'm last out of the three coaches, and he's behind me. So him talking about uh, he asked us to follow him. That's that's a lie. That's a Another lie. lie. That's, he, he that's told about so ten, many, twelve lies he already. Told so many of them. He told so many of them, and he said uh, two of the coaches went one way, and I went yeah. the opposite. I remember way. him saying yeah. What sense that make? <laughs> Why would I separate from the coaches? I'm old school. We we come together. We gonna we gonna together. leave together. Come the, on with the it. The coach now. that remained in the press box, I asked him about three or four times uh, before we left. Like, coach, you good? He said, man, Doc is sending uh, Officer Bell and Officer Zilo, but y'all don't have to leave. I say, stop. So what? Wait a minute. Look at this. So you had already, so Doc, we're talking about the principal. Dr. Davis. Dr. Davis. Dr. Davis. No, no, yeah, I know what Dr. you're saying. Davis. So he already knew. Kind of, uh. What was going on. Right, right. Just to, just to cover us and make sure that we was. That's really, right. You know, he had sent the officers over. So it was a, a real big game and it was crowded out there. So Jeez. it probably took a while for them to get over. So before they made it over there, right. I said, man, let's just go on and leave. That's it. And I asked the coach who stayed up there. He, he does a lot of the video work, right. too, so that's why he stayed. Mm -hmm. He said, man, y'all don't have to leave, man. Dr. Center, Officer Ziegler, and Officer Ballard over. I said, man, cool. If they, when, they, when they make it over here, that would be cool. They could stay with you. I said, before we leave, though, I want to make sure you good. I said, you good? I asked him about two or three times, Coach Martin. I said, you good? He said, yeah, I'm good, bro. I said, all right, then. We gonna head over to our sideline. So let's get into when I saw, okay, and but you know the evidence was presented right. in court. Excellent. The, the yes, and I saw, I saw him laying hands well, lead, on you. Lead, leading up to that, yes. lead, what, what led up to that was, like I said, I was leaving, and uh, me and the sheriff was 
I was third in line. The other uh -huh. two coaches in front of me, That's and Sharon was last. He was fourth. So he comes behind me. So I'm leaving. So he goes to push. He start pushing me in my back, and he's chucking me real hard. And y'all know them bleachers, y'all. I'm a little old now. My knees ain't good like they used to. Yeah, and you've had surgery, right? Yes, I I just had recently had hip surgery yeah. uh, a couple of months before. Why? Wow, he's shoving you, and he's pushing me hard, mm. which is is another lie that he told in court. At the trial, he said that he used a soft hand. That was his exact words. You can quote it. That he used a soft hand to guide me down the bleachers. And That's at this point, you still do not know that he is the sheriff. No, 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 no. So that's what I'm saying. No. Right. So he's he's pushing me in my back. So he even pushed me about four or five times. I turn around and I say, "Hey man, stop putting your hands on me." That's it. I'm leaving. You don't have no reason to put, put your, your hands, hands on, on me. me. So when I stop and turn around and address him pushing me, the fans were, you know, screaming and hollering things or whatever. To where the coaches who were walking with me. They didn't see that I turned around and stopped to tell them stop pushing me. So it kind of created a little space in between us. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I you know told him stop pushing me, he you know uh, move boy, boy I said move. So not then wait a minute as hold he, up. So he kept using as he was pushing me, he was boy. calling me boy. Boy, ah. boy, I said move, move, boy. Just can't so he's up. provoking you at this point. Trying to provoke he's re me. He was trying to provoke you. So Never why would he boy. call you boy and you're a grown man? Right, right. Yeah. Right. And see that boy and that girl, that's, that's, you know, we were going right. right back to the 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s. Come on. They got a, a boy, you strong got the, that's right. racial undertone. That's so what it is. If I'm saying that right, yeah. a real strong racial undertone. It is a racial undertone. So, uh, which... I won't say that I wasn't going to let that uh, make me lose control. If I lost control every time uh, a, a white man called me boy, I'd have been in jail and probably dead a long time ago. That's right. You know, so I didn't let that push my buttons, you know. But boy, I would keep praying for me because I promise <laughs> it you. It was tough. I had to ask I you, can't brother, say, uh, I'm I can't sorry. Say it's, I can't say it's not tough. Like I said, I'm big on respect and I can't yeah. say it's not tough. But... As you're saying it, you're pushing me, that, that, that just overrules you, how you're talking to That's me. That's right. You, you call me, boy, you on. push me in my bag, you're lying in the court saying it was soft, but you are actually shoving, shoving me. Shoving me. You are shoving me enough for me to fall over. Right, right. And, uh, you know, the crowd is kind of cheering because it looks like... So know, what, 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 what were they chanting, though? Can just, you tell me some you of the know, things? You know, normally it, it looks like uh, when a child, when the, when the crowd is cheering, when somebody from the away team is getting put out the game, but to their understanding, they think we're getting put out the game. That's right. You know, they were being real My ignorant, God. so they think we're getting put out by, you know, this big bad man right here. But we were leaving, and you know, the crowd uh, they started cheering, which was that's normal, right? And y'all were leaving on your own free will. We were leaving on our own, so free will. They cheering, and uh, it goes from them cheering to them start chanting, you know, uh, nigga, get on y'all side. Hold up. Know. Stop. Yes. Paul. Yes. Fun call. Yes. I know they didn't say the N word. Yes. Yes. I know they did not say the N word. Yes. That's a trigger. They knew exactly what they were doing. Right. But see, that was never announced in court. Right, right. And like I said, uh, a white man calling me boy, uh, uh, somebody calling me nigga, it could upset me, but it don't make me lose control. It don't you know make you I mean? lose control. Because like, it's a weak, it's a weak move. And you didn't have a flashback for the ancestors. Who? It's but a weak God. move though. But God, it's a weak, it's, it's a weak move. It's just showing just how weak you is when when you do something like that. Yeah, but well, so, when you react, right? I can understand that. So uh, as he was pushing me, I turned around and addressed that. I said, hold up. I said, he just tried to, say, let me use some sense now. He just tried to choke my other coach. My friend, he just tried to choke him. Now you're pushing me in my back. I said, let me use some sense. I said, let me turn sideways and shuffle down the bleachers. You know, That's you it. have to go down the bleachers and get to your eye where you can go yeah, all the way down. Yeah, yeah. I said, let me shuffle that way. If I shuffle now. You can, can avoid him. He, can, he can't. I can at least keep my eye on him. That's it. You know, because the next thing, all right, if you try to choke him and I got my back turned, he's going to try to choke me. Mm. 
So now as I'm shuffling, uh, the crowd is kind of amping him up, and he's kind of playing into the crowd, like showing off for the crowd. It, 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 you know, and I do remember, I, I remember when the when the lawyer was saying, "Were you trying to show out?" That's been, Those that's, were his words. That's what it definitely felt like. He, he said, "Were you trying to show out for the for, for the for the for, for the fans? Were right. you trying to show out?" For your community, mm-hmm. and it's almost—I like remember him saying, "Like, yeah." Right. That's definitely what it was. So uh, now, as I'm shuffling, his hands go up high, and he attacks me and grabs me up here, like he's trying to put me in some type of chokehold. And you'll, you know, the video will come out real soon, and y'all will be able to see where he tried to uh, choke me. So as he's got his hands up here and yeah. he's driving me back. He driving me back so hard, it felt like I had to, you know, stand my ground and kind of bow up a little bit or he's about to push me over. I see. And that's when I defended myself and kind of, you see me coming back across the camera on him, kind of defending myself, really trying to, got a long you arms. I really was trying to yeah, him put some distance you. in between yes. us, you know. So, uh. That was self-defense. Right. As, as me and him kind of getting into a little tussling match. Uh, uh, another white gentleman runs up the stairs with a pink collar shirt on him. Uh, yeah, I remember him. A pink collar shirt. And he should have been arrested. He runs up the stairs. He grabs me and chucks me hard into my chest. Father God. He pushed me so hard. Uh, one of my, one of my, one of my, uh, well, two of my witnesses, the mm. camera guys, uh, knocked over their equipment, pushed me into their equipment. Uh, the guys who video for Carroll High School. So y'all, T Baby and T Lay, everybody, I know y'all know them too. Very familiar. Yeah, so right. they pushed me into the equipment and knocked the equipment over. So uh, now I'm tussling with two gentlemen now. Mm. As I'm tussling with them two, uh, somebody comes behind me and put me in a chokehold. Hold up, wait a minute. Uno dos tres. Put me in a chokehold. Comes behind me. Uh, Three people put me in it more than that. Got a couple of a uh, couple more Lord. of them coming from behind me over my right shoulder. Uh, you know, sucker punching me, getting their little Wait, shots. Wait, what? Yes, Multiple men were attacking you. Attacking me. You were the victim. Attacking. You were found guilty and had to serve twenty three days for getting your ass whooped. Twenty five. Twenty five. And look, we were being transparent right now, y'all. Now listen, y'all don't want me to talk, because I could I could actually enter in. But understand what he's saying right now. Not only did the sheriff, the one that did not announce himself, attack him, but then you got Pinky and the brain, they attack him. Then you got somebody putting him in the chokehold, like we on WWE. Come on now. Listen to this. And he went to jail? None of them were found guilty? None of them were charged. They attacked him. What part of that are we not understanding? What part of that are we not seeing? What part of that? Do we understand what has transpired? What has happened to this man? And the only thing we can see is they were in fear for their lives. That they were afraid. This Caucasian persuasion has to stop. It's, I'm tired of the black and white. I'm sick of it. This man is telling his story. He spent 25 days behind bars for a crime that he did not commit. Why is it that? Did y'all press charges? Let me go there. Were charges able to be pressed against the sheriff and some of the spectators that were there, those that attacked you? Franklin is the question. I think Franklin Parish uh, Police Department. A Winsboro Police Department. What about him? They asked me that I want to press charges. And I also, uh, I said yes. I said yes, but... Uh, Wait a minute. Uh, Franklin Parish asked you, did you want to press charges? You said yes. Was there any type of write-up? No. no. Wait a minute. No one uh, came and took my statement or anything. No like statement. That. Why? Yes, because I was on the end in their home, too. That, you know. that ain't got nothing to do with sliced bread. Right, right. You are the victim. Right. You were attacked. Right, right, right. You were choked out. Right. 
you were shunned, you were pushed, and no statement was taken on your behalf. No. All right, so what would the state troopers? Let's go, let's go, let's go up. Oh, as I, uh, I was advised. So I'm coming. Uh, advised? Advised, yeah. Had some, By who? Uh, some, some lawyers and some alumni. I think the, uh, the majority of the lawyers are Carol alumni. They, uh, uh, asked me, uh, when I asked me, advised me to, uh, go to, uh, Troop F and file a complaint. Mm -hmm. I went down there to file a complaint and, uh, a lady took down my information, but it was kind of one of those cases where somebody take your information now, but you know they're not going to, you know, relay the information over to who they need to. So it was kind of like a, like a show, like she was trying to help me out, but I never received any feedback from them, any type of call or anything. She said she was going to get it up to our superior, and uh, that never happened. Never got any type of call back. So let's go back. Because this is a lot of information to take in. We're going to be taking questions after this. After you were brutally attacked, that's what I'm going to say. You're defending yourself probably against seven folks or more. I mean, they had some other ones. Uh, like I said, as we started tussling, the fans, they didn't spread out away from it. They kind of drew in close, and some of them was throwing drinks on me. They had some other ones, you know, sucker punching me. Mm. Had a little girl. Uh, a little like girl? Probably a teenager. White? Threw some, threw some hot coffee on me. Uh, had some other ones spit on me. Uh, like I said, sucker punched me. And, and, and by letter of law, throwing drinks on somebody is assault. So they definitely, just a bunch of them assaulting me. So, uh. And, and none of them were arrested? No. No so, questioning? No. Mm -hmm. Then we, uh, as the, those uh, fans were jumping on my back. Mm -hmm. The fans? Uh, yeah, like I said, my, my, I have a bad knee and a bad hip. They kind of made me fall down, so when we fell, we fell kind of in between the bleachers where your uh, feet kind of go at, and all of them fell on top of me. So none of the uh, law enforcement pulled any other fans off me. None of the fans were trying to come in between me and the sheriff and, uh, you know, de-escalate a calm situation. Are y'all listening to this? They was only adding to it. So, uh... Two coaches who were with me, Coach Cannelly and Coach Anthony, they were pulling, I could feel them, you know, telling the fans, let them go and get off them, because they didn't want to get up off me. So, on oh, one person. Right, and the, the sheriff has also grabbed me, and also the guy with the pink shirt. I'm like, man, come on, man, we a on the ground. A stampede of yeah. fans were stomping, throwing coffee, throwing hot cocoa. They were kicking you, they were choking you, you were being assaulted. Right, right. So I see, I'm telling the sheriff, I'm like, Come on, man. We roll. I'm still trying to talk with some sense to him. I'm like, come on, man. We're rolling on the ground. Well, we stuck on the ground in between the bleachers. Uh, fans on, on top of me. Let me go, man. Let's come on, man. This is enough. So uh, the coaches were pulling them off of me. Mm. Had the coaches not been there, ain't no telling what would have happened. You could have died. And before, exactly. And you before, died. and before uh, uh, Coach Landers and the rest of the coaches crossed the field. I had already been on the ground. I had been getting attacked for over five to ten minutes. I had been on the ground for minutes, so they didn't. They didn't even understand. They didn't even know what was taking place Ooh. because they were all, you know, into the game and focusing on what we came to do, you know, win the football game. So they didn't even know. So they're trying to make it like our coaches was just out of control. But had they not, uh, same thing. Coach Landers say he said, man. Uh, had we not came over there, man, we could be telling a whole different story. And the same you see, thing. They pushed their narrative. Right. And they the same thing uh, Coach Hines told me. He's a, we all, y'all probably know Coach Hines, military man. He said, man, all I could think about was, you know, being in the military and being stuck behind enemy lines. Yeah. And, and George Floyd. And I said, Coach, man, I, I just said it instantly, with, I just I said it with George tears Floyd. in my eyes. I said, Coach, man, I appreciate what you've done, man, because. They out there drunk, and my, my biggest thing was, I said, man, I don't hope nobody come and stab me in my back. And me being on this ground, yeah. I done got my temperature up, I'm going to bleed out. I had been on the ground for over five so, minutes, you know. So, in actuality, you were in fear for your life. Exactly, exactly. 
that was the biggest thing I was scared of. Somebody coming, you know, come stab me in the back or something like that, or even worse. And, you know, and here they're not maybe using. Even, even uh, pull out a weapon and, you know, pull out a gun and maybe shoot me. I didn't know yeah. what was it, you know, what to think. So uh, the coaches got me up on my feet and uh, my shoe had to came off. Uh, I lost my phone, had drinks and stuff all over me, bloody lip. And uh, just, we started to make our way back to our side of the field. The sheriff is still acting the fool. Video mm -hmm. will be out soon yes. showing him. That's right. Still uh, just just cutting up, just acting the fool. Yeah. And even as we crossed over to the other side of the field, he's just, you know, marching through the field and stumbling all over and putting his hands, uh, pushing, I have that pushing our coaches. I have it. Pushing our uh, I have it. I, I got that right now if yes. anybody wants to look yes. at it. I have it. And that's after we had been separated. He still, the same thing that started the, the altercation, mm -hmm. he still was doing. And I noticed when you guys entered the field, the footage that I have, because, you know, I recorded it from start to finish. So I took some clips okay. from mine, and I actually viewed it. And what I saw was when he was coming, well, first of all, he couldn't put one leg over the rail. I don't know if anybody paid attention to that. So when he was trying to put one rail, one, one, one leg over the rail, he stumbled and fell back. And then he was able to put the second leg over to jump down. Thereafter, he began to push his way through. He was pushing and he was shoving. But I don't think people pay, I don't think the judge, and I can say, nobody paid attention to that because he was on their side. We were in, you were in their parish, in their community. And they sided with their people. Our coaches, and it's really the fans, sad. Our coaches, the fans, our officers, all of us can smell. Oh, I, yeah, I did. I did see um, Zebra being office. pushed. I have that footage as well. I, I took some clips the other day from everything that I recorded. And I did see the disrespect towards our right. our um, police officers. I saw like that. It, like it um, I did take notice of when they asked everybody to leave, when we were asked to leave the football team, right. and they didn't allow them to go you know, into the locker room. Right, right. I did see that. Yeah. And that's when, I mean, I was so overwhelmed, that's when I began to start talking. Right. Because I was confused. Because we're not living in the civil rights era. Like you know what I'm saying? But we're still having to fight for our rights. And then when I hear people say that in Louisiana, in the, and I hate to say in Louisiana, in the Bible Belt, that ra racism still exists. It is still more prevalent than it has been even back then, right. you could actually see it. Is it visible? You know, and I really didn't want to talk about that because I have a lot of white followers. I have a lot of, you know, I love everybody. Right. I come from a mixed family race. You understand what I'm saying? So what we want to do now is talk more about the trial. We're going to get into that. We're going to be taking questions for those that are looking. I pray that you are sharing this live because at the end, we're going to be asking many of you, many of you to support Coach Quill, because this is the reality of what took place back in 2022. I want y'all to understand this. If y'all are wanting to come on Fight Night Live, you are welcome to come on this page. You understand what I'm saying? We have so many young children. Many of y'all don't even know today how many children are suffering over there in the penitentiary. What's the name of that penitentiary down there where they got uh, the young children? They just did a write up down there, not in uh, St. Gabriel. Uh-uh. Uh, uh, mm, not not just in Swamp, but it's down south. Probably, Angola. Probably bridge should be bridge. Angola. Bridge some of them, yeah, with some of them are eating with that with with um handcuffs on. Y'all, this is our reality. We just have to say what it is. You understand what I'm saying? We're about to talk about the trial now. I was present. And you don't want to know what happened, especially. When one of those gentlemen jumped in his mother's face, I was there. Because he said he thought he heard her saying something under her, under, you know, I could hear you in your, I could hear you under your voice saying something. And he was so red when he got in her face. He was so angry, belligerent, and violent. Understand what I'm telling y'all. This man was in a fight for his life. He was the one that was victimized. He was the one that was attacked. Do you understand what I'm saying? Nobody, and I mean absolutely nobody, not the, not the fans, not the sheriff, not his friends, not the staff, none of them were arrested. Talk about your trial.
because I'm co-signing because I was there. And we do have a few people in the audience. I'm not going to show their faces, but they were also in the courtroom with us. Right. Go ahead. And I thank you for being here. Thank y'all for being here. Um, trial, I had four strong witnesses. Four very credible, strong witnesses. Mm -hmm. uh, two officers, Officer Ziegler and Officer Bannon. Mm -hmm. uh, the two video guys who were uh, only a couple of feet. Like I said, they were so close that... Uh, they, that's the equipment they got knocked over when they assaulted me. And also, they got a lot of water damage on their equipment mm -hmm. that came from the drinks that they were throwing on. That's how close. So, they had a front row seat mm -hmm. to what was going on. And uh, they gave some great testimony. Just And I just asked them to come. You know, my lawyer asked them to come and just tell the truth. That's it. And uh, their two witnesses that they had, uh, one of them, the lady, she's a teacher over at Franklin Parish. When Mr. Gilmore, my attorney, uh, showed the video of where she was at when everything took place, mm -hmm. this lady was on the bottom row of the bleachers. She ain't seen that. She was over, that's at least 30 feet. She was over 30 feet away, and the fans were standing up, crowding around the whole altercation. So she couldn't have so seen anything. She, you know? And Lies. They, and they took... Deceit. So the, he didn't have too strong wind. He, he didn't have, you know... The two witnesses he had, they weren't strong witnesses. And mine, yeah. all four of mine were strong witnesses. Right. And I had a potential all the way up to at least 10 witnesses. But they were coerced. We already know what was going on. Right. Go ahead. Right. So, uh, like I said, uh, my attorney definitely proved my innocence. He showed where I was only defending myself. He did. Uh, he also showed where uh, the sheriff didn't identify himself. He didn't have a gun on him. He didn't have... He never said that I was under arrest. He didn't have any handcuffs. You wouldn't read your Miranda rights? Uh, none of that. He didn't have, not even a taser on. He didn't, you know, sometimes they have, if they're kind of dressed down a little bit, maybe. Yeah. They may have the badge hanging out. He didn't have none of that. And have, I got footage of that. Any of that on. He was just, like I said, I thought he just was a drunk booster. Because he was off work. I mean, just call a spade a spade. He was off work. But when they asked him, when the OG lawyer asked him, when Gilmore asked him, what are your hours? Takes me back to the five point beats. Right. And remember he said from nine right. to five. You know, I ain't nothing but a climb, but y'all listen seriously though. <laughs> but he asked him, the OG, and I'm, I'm going to give much praise to him. Gilmore, off, I mean, uh, lawyer Gilmore asked him. He said, well, what are your hours? And instead of him specifically saying from nine to five or ten to four, he said, <laughs> I'm always on duty. That was his justification. Right. Now, clearly, now we understand if, if you were in, you know, we can understand if something was going on and then you, you know, you, you came about and you decided to de-escalate, you know, with right. the situation. Right. Right. But there was no situation. You created, created. you created the problem. Actually, you were the problem. Lord, help me. I hate to be honest, but that's what it was. And we're here to tell the truth of our young alive, baby. It's always going to be raw and unadulterated. Nothing is going to be held back. So, you in the courtroom. I'm sitting there. We got our people sitting there. And he gets on there and to be sworn in to tell the truth, the whole truth. So, help you, God. And, and uh, you lie. But go ahead. Go ahead. I'm going to say it. You lie. He told a bunch of lies. Y'all, you did with lie. Starting with that he asked us to come down the press box. Come out of the press box. It didn't, it didn't make sense to me. At another all. one where he said he escorted us out of the press box. He told another lie and said that yeah. once we left the press box, that's how me and him got chest to chest because I mm. refused to leave. I had no reason to be mad, y'all. No reason. I to want be to mad. pull up my footage because no reason to be mad. We we was playing a a, a, a hell of a game. Yeah. Proud of our kids and yeah. then even make sure we say this. When everything broke out, not one of our kids left that sideline. Not one of them. And they want to they wanna put everything and say, like, Tara was this, we not disciplined. Yeah. No, this is this a different, this a new uh, day and time, man, Carol. That's right. Our kid, we got some some real good kids. They really, they really do. They really spur. They really some little sparrow kids, man. They yeah. get whatever they. These kids work out in Jordan's. Yes. <laughs> we got some good kids though. We don't. We don't have anybody uh, getting arrested. And, 
We don't. Getting suspended from school and it. things like that. We got, as a, a group, we got some real good kids. But take it, take it to another level. Let me tell y'all something that I want to say about Franklin Parish football team. From what I saw, and the Carroll High football team, those boys did not fight. No. Those boys did not, those young teenagers did not get into it. Not at all. It was Sheriff Cobb. And those fans. And the fans. Feed, I think, I would That's say, who was. he fed off of them. Both. And they fed off of him. Checkmate. That's who it was. It was not our children. It looked like we about to bring me something else. Baby, come on. Because we lying. Talk about uh You tell me what you what what is the baby? Incarceration. So what we want to get into, because we don't want to miss nothing. Everything in between is what we're gonna talk about tonight. So when you were incarcerated, because I, you know, I don't know everything, but I'm giving you an opportunity to come on here and tell us. What happened when you were incarcerated? Uh just had a lot of they definitely knew who I was when they I knew got who you there. were. Yeah. Uh, not the not the inmates, not the fellas that was locked down in there. They but the administration. Know, but the, the, the guards and the administration, you yeah. Know, saying certain things to me, trying to press my button. Hold up, stop, down. stop the press. But now just saying little all kind of little slick stuff to us, you know, well to me, you know, just picking at me. I I could be doing something doing the same thing, walking the child or whatever. And uh, we all in line. They just pick me out of line and say something off the wall to me, you know. And uh, but it hadn't been nothing really uh, physical, I can see. But they didn't. Uh, Were you in the hole or anything? I have to ask those questions. This, this, basically. Baby, uh, don't you tell me you was in the hole. Got don't it. tell me you. I know you got to talk. Don't <laughs> tell me that you were in the hole. Uh, Quillen, don't tell me that. This is basically what happened. Uh, Got into a little verbal back and forth with with uh, one of the, the officers there, one of the guards. Look at that. And uh, me and him was, you know, having some words, whatever, which I felt like he was picking at me. And uh, he pushed me, shoved me. Thank God I had my socks on because uh, I slipped down. And it gave me a chance to get my thoughts together and kind of see what was going on, you know. And I had some, there had some good brothers in there. White and black. That was like, nah, coach, don't let them, not nah, don't let them get away with that. White and black brothers in there. Don't let That's them, what I'm yeah, don't let them, don't let them uh, push your buttons like yeah. that. You know, it make you lose control. So a couple of them, nah, coach, that was called yeah. the coach in there. Being strong. Shout out to the brothers in there that's locked up. Man. Yeah. And uh, just let me know not to uh, respond to it. So uh, after the, incident after he pushed me pushed me down they uh got up they took me to the hole took me to the hole uh um, took me to the hole for uh, for the majority of that day and, and what, what is this hole i need you to talk about the hole just basically you're in a, in, in a cell by yourself you got a um, urinal you have a urinal they but, feed uh, you yeah they feed you in there but you know yeah, you don't want to be in, you don't want to be in, in, in jail at all. You definitely don't want to be in the hole. Anybody put you in, the in, the hole. in the jail? Do y'all y'all Rick? Is anybody talking back to me? You they just me. listening. Are y'all understanding what he? They put him in the hole after after he was victimized, attacked, choked out, kicked, basically whooped, stoned. Objects, all types of different beverages thrown at him for a crime he didn't commit. I'm gonna keep saying that. They put the man in the hole. We talking about Carol High Coach Monroe, Louisiana. They talking, Rick. Y'all got to give me a moment. And let me say this before I get into my next question. I want you to think of this as if this was your child. Remember the movie A Time to Kill? When a little black girl was raped 
Listen to me, y'all. We're talking about this man's life. He took a stand in what he believed in to prove his innocence. And I, for y'all alive, I believe that before he walked in the courtroom, they already had made that decision. Yes, I do. Despite all, they already made that decision. Their whole MO was to lock him up. They needed a point to prove. When are we as a community going to come together? Though? He stood for right and righteousness. A lot of people in the Bible stood for right too. And one thing I know about the Heavenly Father in heaven, he going to take care of his people. Joseph was jailed and came out a whole ruler. Victorious, great. He was an overseer. He may have been knocked down for a short period of time, but he done dusted himself off and he done got up and now he's telling his side, which is the truth. And I have documented all evidence through a video as to what occurred. So the truth is out there. Hmm? It's out there. But I need to know what are your plans now since you no longer can coach. You no longer can do the things that you love to do. You know, training out. What were you, the defensive? What, what coach were you? Wide receiver. He was the wide receiver coach, y'all. Wide receiver. The Carroll High football team has suffered greatly. I'm going to say it again. My child is number six. I have some nephews out there that have the office just like my son. I say this from my heart. You get what I'm saying? Imagine if this was your son defending himself. You got a bunch of liars in a courtroom, predominantly white. And don't get me wrong, I have a lot of followers on here. I'm not coming for my white people. I'm coming for a select few people that made the wrong judgment against a black man. That's what I'm doing tonight. I got a child that's 30 years old that's a black young man. I got another one that's 23 and one about to turn 18. And I would want him to defend himself if somebody attacked him. I'm asking y'all to share this video on tonight. I'm also asking you guys, we have a, he, and, and I, I want, before I get into all that, my husband wanted me to ask you, what are your plans now? What's next for, you know, Coach Quillen? Because you fell by a coach, you know, when you was just in here with my son, Zane. You know, they love him, you know what I'm saying? They love him. What's next for you? That's what I'm content. Uh, I don't care if it was the president, <laughs> anybody. They're not going to be able to stop me from, uh, you know, coaching is, is not just on the field. We're trying to teach these kids. Uh, lessons that have helped them become better, go from young men to becoming, you know, grown men. We That's see right. them down the line, we see them with their families. We don't get paid much for coaching at all. We do it for the love, and we want to see these, we want to just, this the way where we give back. You know, football is just the uh, the vehicle that we use to get them where they're going. That's right. So, I don't care if it was, if it was the president, if it was Donald Trump or whoever, the governor or whoever, they can't stop us from, you know, they could maybe stop me from being out there on the field with them coaching, it's but it's, it's bigger than that. It is. It's, big, it's bigger than, you know, and how I look at it is, uh, they get away with this, you know, they're going to keep on doing it. And the next thing is going to be your son. It's going to yeah. be, you know. My grandboy. We, we can't have Shoot. it. We can't have it. I got a 19-year-old son. I got yeah. an 18-year-old dog. Come on. We, we can't have that. So the, the, the next thing is, uh, is to appeal. The appeal is in the process right now. All uh, right, I want you to talk about this because uh, we, we're definitely going to need your help. Um, I want you to get into that. Uh, what help do you need right now? Right, the appeal is uh, being finalized and will officially probably be turned in in about a week or so. Okay. And uh, 
cost it over, I think about twelve fifty for the transcript. That's twelve hundred dollars. Twelve hundred. Twelve hundred and fifty dollars. The transcripts. Just for the transcript, just to uh, basically like a play by play, a word by word, mm -hmm. quoting what happened with testimony. So line everything. on line about everything that. Everything that happened in the courtroom on that trial date. So that's so the, the transcripts are twelve hundred and fifty dollars. Right, and also there's a uh, another fee that we had to come up with to uh, get the transcript processed and everything from the court office. So, and with lawyer fees too. So, uh, definitely been working on that. Not gonna stop fighting. We're gonna keep going, and uh, no, hopefully, hopefully the appeal uh, can go before somebody with some type of integrity. Somebody that's going to be fair, you know, uh, I think a, a teenager who was fair could look at this case and look at the whole trial and look at the evidence and see that I was definitely innocent, and, you know, and they was guilty of putting their hands on me. So, that's right, and uh, there's so many innocent people in jail right now, right. still fighting for their lives. So uh, hopefully the appeal can go through and uh, from then, you know, we can go from the appeal and maybe uh, look to some further some further action, uh, maybe pressing some charges against some of those people that assaulted me. Yeah, and again, we're not law. I'm not a lawyer by far. I studied free law, but uh, I'm not a lawyer by far. Uh, my husband is trying to yes, show me something. Tell him how to. Okay, so of course, um, we're going to get into letting you guys know that we're going to need some financial assistance. Um, of course, you just heard it was twelve. Hundred dollars, twelve hundred and fifty dollars. That he's going to need for transcripts, and um, enough is enough. We hear that all the time, you know. Air quotes. Enough is enough. But um, right now, we're going to let you know where to go. Baby, did you put that on? And I'm talking to my it's husband. Y'all went live, so you know. It's on there. We did. So my husband has let me know we did put the. Is that a GoFundMe? Yeah, that's well. That's a GoFundMe to go and support Coach Quillen. I'm asking you all, each of you that are watching, each of you that have shared, to give what you can. No amount is too little, too small, too teeny, too tiny. Right. Like the sausage is tiny, okay? None is too small. I don't care if it's five dollars. Baby, give what you can because we need to get this appeal process in action now. Time waits on nobody. If we didn't need you, we wouldn't be asking. But I know y'all heard this story on tonight. Um, I do have the video footage that I, I probably will, you know, share again. Um, there's going to be some things that are going to be, he's going to put out some more footage. We're just asking for your assistance and for your help at this time. If God is leading you to do so, if you know other people that, then y'all have to excuse me, I had to burp. But listen, if God is leading you to do it, please do so. If you have a cash out, we may add that or whatever. We are giving you thanks in advance. We are giving you thanks in advance. Okay? This should not have been, but it and, happened. And April put the... Uh, April's under there? She put the GoFundMe in her in the comments. Okay, so if you look into the comments right now, I'm going to get on Funny on Live real quick because I don't know if you guys have any questions. His fiance, oh, my husband has it. All right, thank you, baby. His fiance is in, thank you, Laquetta. Thank you, my sister, Lisa Roberts, is watching. She's also been, uh, she's also in, in the school system. She is now retired. She's a teacher, I mean, a principal, I'm sorry. Um, and yes, systematic race, racial issues. Yes, sir, Keith Holmes is on right now. Mac Larry, I've been locked up down there, and he knows what he's talking about, Amy Minor. But uh, his fiance has put that in the comments. April Washington, please uh, go ahead on if you want to, uh, to, to give. And uh, she did say he's speaking on the actual events of what happened during the Franklin Parish game. Thank you for tuning in, Bertha Man and Daryl Whaley, one of my friends. Y'all see him dancing on Fighting Out Live all the time. One of my closest and dear friends is tuning in. Lisa Hill, we appreciate you. You are family. Um, Brandy Brown, and I was trying to look for some questions. Angela Bloxon, thank you. I wish you were here because you know you always on the set with me. Jaminski Roberts, uh, sons actually play. My uh, sister-in-law played for Carol High. Indeed, loving more. Uh, Kathy Miles, y'all are tagging people. Angelique, y'all, thank you so much. 
You got so many people on here right now, man. Y'all are tuned in. K O N. Yeah, thank, thank you, you for tagging. He said thank you. Franklin Parish, yes. Angela Bloxon, yes, ma'am. Uh Marvin Hecker is on. Thank you, Marvin, for tuning in. And April just posted the GoFundMe. If you have any questions right now, you are free to ask those questions. Anybody that wants to ask any questions. Lee Thornton, thank you so much. He said we support you from Bastrop. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you. And uh, uh, like sister said, anything y'all can give, but if you can't, you know, it's, it's tight on everybody right now. I appreciate the prayers, and I appreciate the support more than anything. Because at the initial, when this first happened, I... Uh, call myself trying to downplay it, not bringing any attention to it, taking a, attention away from the boys on the field and try to downplay it and just hopefully that these folks out in Franklin Parish were going to uh, do the right thing, that God was going to soften their heart. And uh, that didn't work. So uh, now I have to, you know, come from behind and kind of bring some attention to it. That's so, right. And that's where we at with it. Thank Brother Rick Salisbury, yeah. Sister Hill. Uh, everybody who been supporting. Thank you. Everybody. So much. God bless y'all, and and I, I I definitely appreciate y'all. Y'all see me out in the street. I'm I'm active. I'm gonna be at the game right. tomorrow. Still supporting these kids. And you see me. You got anything you want to ask me? You got anything you want? I'm here. And y'all, let me tell you, we got a small team. We may be about seven of us. I know they probably don't want me to mention their name, so I won't. But let me tell you, we're working hard, but we're going to need your help. We really do. If you guys want to see him innocent, I'm going to need y'all to get on that GoFundMe. Share the GoFundMe. April has already posted it. And give. And if they want to see justice. Oh, baby. You better say it. Come here, baby. You don't want to come over? And also, I'll say one more thing, sister. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the transcript fees and the uh, court fees and also... The lawyer fees for the for the appeal, we have reached for the most part reached our goal. But the next uh, thing that I have to address is finding a, a, another lawyer, and probably going to end up being a civil rights lawyer. So that's yeah. definitely what I need y'all support with. That's it. In any way you can help, anyway, anyway, any way you can help is going to be greatly appreciated. Greatly. So that's the that's the next thing. Our goal is to raise thirty thousand. Right. Oh baby, did you just how much was it? Thirty thousand. So, just seeing from my husband, the number, this, this, this for thirty thousand for justice, for justice, justice for judge. I mean, judge. Not, you know? not only for him, but for every <laughs> who he represents. He took a stand for every single coach, and I'm gonna say coaches nationwide. He took a stand. So right now we need thirty thousand dollars. Like he said, the transcript, the fees, and whatever. Well, it's more so the, uh, it's going to be the upcoming lawyer fees and also. So the I lawyer fees, y'all. For the federal. Y'all, for the federal. On, for the the federal, federal, on a federal also, level. If I have to. We're uh, seeking it. Bring the pill to tenant, it. Another court. Screenshot it. Take a picture. We're pursuing it. So we're, we're going to need thirty thousand dollars. I know it seems like a lot. But if we can come together, we can definitely get it. We can see this black man walk. Give what you can. So give what you can. Baby, thank you so much. You're so sweet over there. I love you. I love you too. Black love, though. Yes, it is. Yeah, it. Thank you so much, everyone, for uh, tuning in. Laquetta says she doesn't see the GoFundMe. April, can you tag that? April is right there. April Washington. That is his fiance. Look right above you, maybe four people up. Thank you for tuning in. My auntie Joy Salisbury Jacobs is on. Thank you so much for tuning in. All of Monroe, Louisiana. I want to give a shout out to all of you that are tuned in. Carroll High School, even those from Franklin Parish. I know that you are tuned in. Many of you did say that um, you knew that he was innocent, but you didn't want to say anything. So one thing I can say is thank you, though. Thank you guys for reaching out. You're greatly appreciated. Did you want to say anything else? Uh, just that I appreciate everybody. And uh, like I said, uh, anybody that know me that knows my mother, she's a part of uh, Mount Zion Baptist Church over on 18th Street. Uh, 
She's a, a pillar in the community. She does coat drives, all kind of things. Yes, she uh, does. Mission work, uh, breast cancer. Mm. She doing something almost I every day. I call it evangelist. She, do, she doing something <laughs> almost every day. Yes, so, she is. Uh, she definitely stand behind the community, and I definitely stand behind the community. And uh, this whole thing is not about me. You might see my name everywhere, or Coach Quillen, or, but it's not about me, y'all. It's not. It's, it's, it's about our kids. That's what it's all about. It's about our kids. Because they are the future. It's about our kids. That's right. And if they feel like they can get away with this on a grown man, on. imagine what they're going to do our kids who don't have the full understanding of what their rights mm. are. You know? And it's a, it's, a, it's a mental thing, you know, when you want to oppress a certain person or a certain people That's right. for they get mentally in our kids to discourage our kids. I think our kids, get our kids to think that they, that this is normal. This, this ain't normal, y'all. Yes, it's he is, normal. Amy Manor. Yes, it's he not is. normal. So like I said, it's, it's, it's about the kids. It's definitely, y'all. You see me out at the game, in the street, approach me. I'm a very down-to-earth person, and I'm a very genuine person. And I'm just a, 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 a solid individual. But this is definitely about the kids. It sure it's is. It's about our kids and about our future. Because, uh... If they could get away with this in, in 2022 and 23, they're going to continue to get away with it. And, and, and that, ain't, that ain't acceptable at all. We're not having that. So. And any parents that are on here, if you have any questions before we leave, I know I kind of uh, went over my 30-minute mark, but um, I have a lot of parents that are texting me on this phone, on my other phone, and I'm looking on this phone, and then we're recording with my husband's phone. So, um... Yes, sir. Access is key. That's right, Keith Holmes. Equal justice for all. And sad to say, justice is not for all. But it needs to become that. That's what we're looking for. And it's going to take all of us coming together. So I won't speak much more on uh, things that are about to happen. We do have a homecoming that is coming up. I'm hoping that all come out. For the Franklin Parish, we do have a game. The game will be held on the 21st. At 2 p.m., we will be going against Franklin Parish and Carroll High School. Please come out and support your Carroll High Bulldogs. My son is number six, and all of your children have their numbers. I will be there. Will you be there? Judge Quillen going to be up in the house. He looked like me, man, what you, what? <laughs> My husband, you. look, he looked like not for y'all, you know. But we're making sure, um, and, and look, we want to um, shout out uh, Brandon Landers. We want to shout out um, Coach Hines. We want to shout out all of our coaches awesome. because you guys, you guys made the difference. Whether you know it or not, you made the difference. Despite everything that was said, you did what you were supposed to do. And you all are greatly appreciated. Think it not strange. God is still on y'all side. And he's going to open up the doors of opportunities for each of you coaches as he is doing right now for Coach Quillen. Y'all continue and remain to be blessed. Um, they're saying just the alumni attorney. Did anybody? Yes, they did. Yes, Angela. So um, is that it, y'all? Y'all be sure to share the video. Please do. And y'all continue to be blessed. That's it. Bye for now.